Hello and welcome to the latest Craft Mania Sunday Showcase. I'm Jamie and I'm going to be your host today as I take you through some brand new products. Today we're going to be looking at a whole new set of dies which are incredibly Moorish and I think you're really going to love them. We also have a couple of products that we've seen on previous showcases and techniques that we're bringing back and refreshing so you can hold on in there because I'll be showing you them a little later as well. Let's start off by looking at your dies that you've got to choose from this week. There are six different dies, you can buy them all individually, but of course being a Sunday showcase we have an amazing bundle offer for you as well. I'm going to tell you your codes as we go because if you wish to you can give us a call on 01502 218 281 between 9 and 5 Monday to Saturday to order your products or of course you can text us, the mobile number for that will be in the description or if you wish to you can of course pop online and order them or pop into one of our stores. Uh, the code is D108F and this one is 15.99. What we're looking at this time is our creator card style die and this one is our square floral frame. Moving on, we then have a rectangle floral frame and this one is code D107F, that one is also 15.99. Switching things up slightly, we have a really lovely nesting flower die. Now one of the bits I really love about this is how you get such a tiny little die right the way up to some really big ones. And we can do so many things with these, including different techniques that I'll be showing you a little later on. But there is so many options and, and styles we can do with that. It's a really good one to have in your stash. This one is code D106F and it's 11.99. Moving on, we have some really cute little flowers, really lovely to create silhouettes of effects with, or of course we can ink them, paint them, stain them, whatever we wish to, to create some really different styles. One of the bits I really like with this is how tiny the little butterflies are, and these actually layer really nicely on top of the rectangle frame, so I'll be showing you that done shortly. We also have a little grass dye in here too, so if you do want to stand your flowers on some grass, you can do. The code for that one is D111F and that one is 9.99, which considering the amount of dyes you're getting in there is quite a good little price actually, isn't it? Moving on, we have an oval floral frame. Now this one fits really nicely into the middle of the rectangle floral frame. So if you do want something to fill the void in the middle there, these are perfect for that. You'll of course see that on my example shortly. Uh, if you don't want to use these in the, in the frames, then of course you could put any number of things in them. But these are lovely little topper pieces as well. So even if you don't want them for the centres of the frames, we can certainly coordinate our designs and use these alongside them. This one is code D109F and it's 899. We then have a square version. Now this one obviously fits inside the middle of the square floral frame if you do wish to. Uh, this one is code D110F and it is 899. Now, if you can't decide between all of them, which I know is always a struggle when we actually have to pick between items, you can buy them all on our mega bundle for this week's Sunday Showcase. Now, please don't forget with our Sunday Showcase offers, they are only valid for one week. This one will end on at 5pm, Saturday the 10th of February 2018. But your offer this week is that you can buy all of these dies for just £45. Now, individually, if you was to purchase them separately, it would cost you £71.94. So you're saving £26.94p by buying them as a giant bundle in this week's special offer, which is an incredible saving, isn't it? That really is quite a, an amazing saving to be had. So I hope you're going to jump in on that one. We have a limited number of bundles available, as we always do, so please don't miss out. If you do want them, get hold of them as soon as you can. Once again, you can order them by phone, by text, online, or of course you can pick them up in store. So many options for you to get hold of them. Of course, as well, don't forget, if you are an international viewer, we do send anywhere in the world. Uh, there is a whole page dedicated to telling you all about that. It's our Frequently Asked Questions page on our website. So do pop on there, have a little read about the terms and conditions for that. But we will literally send these anywhere where you wish. Uh, moving on, showing you a couple of the other products I'm going to show you in today's video. You will have seen this one before. This was on a showcase literally about a fortnight ago, uh, but I've used it quite a lot in today's showcase. Basically, because of this design really works well, and that whole showcase did, to be honest, with a lot of the designs that you're going to be looking at today. But I didn't want to confuse you too much by bringing too many other dyes into the mix, but if you did get the showcase from this set, this new showcase we're showing you today 
will work really well with that one and give you a lot more options. Uh, but this is just one of the dies from that. Your code for this one is D102A and it's 1099. We refer to it as a butterfly corner, although to be honest, I tend to use it more as a border or just an embellishment piece, but it does make quite a lovely corner if you wish to do that. In the description, I will actually put the, the Sunday showcase for that collection so you can go back and have a little look at it. The offer sadly has ended, but there was about seven dies in that collection and they would work really well with this lot. Uh, currently, I believe they're all in stock. So if you do want to add a couple of them onto your order, if you are ordering this lot, especially if you're having it shipped to you within the UK, because if you do buy the mega bundle, you'll be over the free PMP part. Uh, so you might as well add on a couple more dies and get them as well. Moving on, one of the other things you're going to see featured quite a lot in today's video is our floral foam, uh, or flower foam. When we launched this a few weeks ago, we called it formable foam. It's all basically the same thing. It's lovely foam that we can heat and turn into beautiful flowers. Now, you may remember the Sunday Showcase we launched this on. Uh, Lynn Lewis was a guest designer on that one, and she made us some beautiful flowers, and I mean absolutely stunning flowers so again i will link that showcase so you can go back and have a little look at that video if you haven't seen it already but the good news is, is if you are somebody who's already using the foam or got that bundle and haven't yet got opened it there are new colors and not only are there new colors it is a new size and a new price point these are a4 sheets there are nine new colors or nine additional a4 sheets and they're only 89p a sheet so it's come down a bit in price and it gives you more options, and these are now available in both stores. Again, they're available on the website, so if you do want to tag on any of these to your order, you certainly can. If you haven't seen the video for this, I would really urge you go and watch it. Um, on a few of my samples today, you'll see flowers made with them. None of them are as good as Lynn's, to be fair, but it is a really nice product to work with, and one that you can create some lovely flowers with really easily. On the video when we launched this, I actually show you a couple of different ways that you could use it and a couple of different ways that you could heat it. So do go and have a little look at that. I don't want to bore you by showing you again today because I know a lot of you have already seen it. But if you haven't, do go and watch that one. You're going to love it. I'd say it's only 89p a sheet. There are nine colours available. Uh, you can, of course, let us know in the comments the colours you want if you want them held in store. Or, of course, you can order them online. Don't forget, we now have a click and collect service as well. So if you're not too sure on your colours or you're not too sure what items you wish to have, you can, uh, but you do want to collect in store, pop onto the website, pick the items you want, and then when you check out, just select click and collect. And you can tell us whether you want to collect it from a Yarmouth store or a Lowestoft store. It will then remove the postage costs off of your order as well. And if you wish to, you can choose to pay offline or you can choose to pay in store. Um, or if you wish to, you can pay via PayPal or by card over the internet, which is anyone's fine with us. Uh, a lot of people like the PayPal feature because it means they can pay out their PayPal instead of out of their purse. And it doesn't quite feel the same, does it, when we spend money that's on computers instead of actual hard-earned cash. So, okay, let's have a look at a few of the cards I've made today and give you a few ideas of what you could create with some of these products. So the first card we've got down here is a, a little spring version because a lot obviously a lot of these frames are quite floral and springy. So if you are somebody who makes Easter cards, this might be a nice one for you to be doing. Uh, it's just an ordinary square card. I've just folded the card in half to create like an ordinary easel, then folded in the two sides to create a point to it. You can, of course, cut them off if you wish to, but I quite like leaving them on and gluing them behind it because it gives the point more strength, especially at the tip, and it will help support the, the actual card. Uh, for my card, I've used the square floral frame. Now, this was a new idea I come up with today, and I'm sure people have done this way before I have, so I'm not going to claim it's me being clever, but it is something in my world that's new. I've cut my die out of Miri card and I've stuck it flat to my card and then I decided that it looked a bit bland so I wanted to paint it. So I've painted it in using distress inks and just ordinary paintbrush and water. But normally whenever you paint in a die cut, unless you use a black die cut, the inks go over the colour of the card and then you end up with staining or, or bleeding or horrible effects like that, or I tend to, because I'm a bit of a messy painter. The good bit with Miri card is it doesn't accept the ink, it doesn't accept the paint. So it will just rebuff it and send it back into the holes of the, the die cut. So you can basically paint any colours or inks you want through this, and as long as they're not permanent inks, obviously, and it will just 
disperse it back to the card and hopefully give you quite an easy painted effect. So I've done that on a few of my cards today just because I really liked it. Whenever I find a new technique, that's it, I'm off with that idea. Um, so that's one of the ones I've done. The distress inks I used were Seedless Preserves and Wild Honey. Um, but of course you could use any colour scheme, set up to however you wish to, couldn't you? But yeah, that's that one. The stamp in the middle is one of our new stamps, our little bunny stamp. Uh, it's $5.99, it's one of our designer range of stamps. It's quite a diddy one, but it is certainly very cute. I've just stamped that and then I've painted it in again using my Distress Inks in different shades to get that sort of faded in effect, hopefully. I'm not the best at painting, I'm not gonna lie, but I do quite enjoy that and I love the little stamped image. And the nice bit is with these stamps, is they put the colours on the top of them so you know how to do it and it even shows you how to do your shading because I am pretty dire at that so it certainly hopefully gave me a little nudge in the right direction. Moving backwards to another one of our cards this one we have the floral frame the square floral frame and as I said earlier that little square floral doily style piece fits perfectly in the middle of this it's as if they've actually left the gaps in the, in sort of the design for it to fit in perfectly and it really does work quite nicely so that's using your two different ones of those we then have the foam using the nested flower so this has got a couple of the different or two or three of the different sizes of the flower actually used on the foam and then this one I've heated it and I've used the rolling technique for anyone who is used to working with the foam and then in the middle I've just popped my little stamens. I haven't got the stamens out to show you today but there are loads of stamens available in store or on the website so if this is something you're going to get into you may want some different stamens. These are just the lilac-y ones that are available but there's lots of different colours and shapes and sizes of them available and more coming. We will be having more shortly. Um, but that's it really. On the back of this one we've got one of them paper doilies that we showed you on last week's video. I know an awful lot of you bought them last week when we show you but that's just one of the ones out of them one pound packets of doilies. Uh, you get three different sizes, four of each and uh, yeah, just popped behind one of my layers to match in with my die cone. Moving on to my next card. Now, I've got a bit pixie powdered. You may have already noticed I am a bit multicoloured again today. Uh, this is the reason why. <laughs> this is where it all went wrong and I got stained for today's video. These were just made out of white card. This is using the floral, um, sorry, the layering flower dye. This one down here, believe it or not. And I will show you at the end of today's video how to make these flowers. We did it once before, a very, very, very long time ago on one of my very first videos. I show you how to actually make this style of flower using a punch at the time, but this die cut is certainly a lot better off because of it gives you multiple sizes, which means that we can take all the way from the little flower down here to the mediums to the larges, and that's actually, to be honest, starting with about that size flower. So if you wanted to, you could do smaller. Um, my short fat fingers certainly don't make me want to try that, but if you're a little bit more patient than I am, you certainly could give it a go. And of course, this isn't even the largest die. As you can see, if I can just pinch that one, we can go a lot bigger with our flowers if you wanted to, which of course lends itself more to home decor and MDF projects and things like that. They might be a bit too big for cards, but it's good to have that freedom and that choice to do it. So that's just our flowers around here. In the middle, we have our little square topper style floral frame. And then of course, we've got the nice big um, square floral frame for the outside bit as well and then again another doily I've got a bit of a doily thing going on at the moment a little bit obsessed with our doilies but I just think they match in quite well with the dies because it's all quite lacy so bear them in mind and we'll come back to showing you how to make them flowers at the end of today's video moving on forwards to another one we have just a nice little stepper card now this is a lot like the stepper card we did uh, when we actually launched them dies we were talking about a couple of weeks ago when we did all the different butterfly dies and i did very similar then but i wanted to show you again that if you did pick up that set of dies i know an awful lot of you went crazy for them this set does really work well with that so we've got the edgeable on top this one don't forget doesn't come included in today's mega bundle but is available separately for 10.99 that was the code D102A if you do wish to order it separately. Um, but it does match in quite nicely. The little swirls along the sides here also are the trim offs of there. And the big butterfly is the one that comes out the middle of that die. So nothing was wasted when I did this. It's all just been cut up to create these little side panels and bits. But of course today's focal point is our really lovely 
floral rectangle frame, which again I've done in my mirror board and then I've just painted it in using different colours of distress inks to give it a bit more of a vibrant pop to the first one I show you where I've done that with. On the, in the middle we also of course have that oval topper and then I've used the same oval topper in the backgrounds just to put on my different layers and I quite like the way you've got the matching filigree bits to the pieces on the front here from our butterfly one so again quite easy to do but it gives you a bit of a different effect hopefully. On to our next one, so for this one we bring back the foam and we've got a different set of flowers going on this time. Now this was actually made using the salmon colour in the foam which starts off like that but I've distressed mine. Now believe it or not, they're a little bit darker than the sample one I've done here for you. But just to show you how you can tone them down a bit, on mine I've distressed them using wild honey and seedless preserves. Which if you're not that up on your distress inks, is quite a bright orange and quite a bright purple. But when you use it on the foam it sort of goes a bit darker and a bit more subtle and it gives me this sort of more toned in effect. I've used the same colours, for instance, on my background panel here, which of course is the square floral frame from today's Mega Bundle. And you can see how the colours have really reacted quite differently to give me the different effect you can see on the foam. But the foam again, this one's heated and instead of doing the rolling technique, I've used the embossing tool and actually shaped my foam this time. And then of course we've got cream stamens in the middle of these ones instead. Went a bit overboard with my stamens, but I do quite like them, so hopefully you do too. Uh, of course, so as we've mentioned, you've got the square floral frame in the background. And then here we've got the oval topper one. But because I wanted it to appear from both sides of my postcard, I just cut it in half and glued it into place. So it is just the one piece, but it's just been extended in the middle and covered up with the postcard to give you a little idea of how we can cut these about. We don't have to use them just as they are, do we? We can certainly cut them here and there if we wish to which is great because that brings me on to our next card which is exactly what I've done with this one. So, as I said earlier, that rectangle which starts off very portrait in its design and very sort of going upwards because it's got our little parrot and our little butterflies down the side. There's nothing stopping you from cutting this about. So I've got one here that I've already cut out and I'm going to show you what I mean. Basically, all I did was trim this down the side. Now you would do this a little bit neater than I'm going to because of I don't want to keep you waiting forever. But with a little snip here and there, we can cut off the butterflies from one side. And then we can do exactly the same over this side and remove these birds, or bird I should say. And then all of a sudden, there is nothing on our frame that means we can't use it as a landscape instead of a portrait. Now on this one, I didn't want to waste my little bird or my butterflies, so I've bought them back and I've just glued them in. So you can see quite easily how you can just glue them underneath the leaves coming out from the flowers and create a very different effect dye very easily. So if you do want to cut it about a bit, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. I've put mine on an acetate overlay uh, just so you could then see the little oval topper behind it. And then obviously if we pop on in here, you've got that stamped on there with just a little message. These are great for doing that with. Um, I've stuck with a very Miss You theme throughout some of mine today. I think I've got the odd thinking of you and the odd happy birthday, but whatever text you've got that fits, you could certainly use them on there. Or of course, you can I'll also see on some of mine, I've actually added other toppers or, or die cuts on top of them and stamped on them as well. So you don't have to use it flat like that if you don't want to, but it does give you different options. I really like the yellow, by the way. Yellow is actually one of my favourite colours and uh, it's not a very popular one, so we don't tend to do too much in yellow. But I thought this really floral, vibrant, springy theme deserved a little bit of yellow stuck in every now and again. So that's why you've got one of them like so in yellow. And of course I couldn't leave the square one out, so I also did a square one in yellow. Now on this one we of course have the floral square, we've then got the square floral topper, and then at the top and the bottom we've got that border one, don't forget that's the one that doesn't come included in your mega bundle, but is available separately if you wish to. Uh, but it does make a perfect little edgeable at the top of your card, and quite a nice little stopper bar at the bottom if you do want to make easel cards, and it can all just fold down and be sent if you wish to. Uh, but yeah, so that's that one. And then moving on, I'll show you another one. 
So for this one, I wanted to do something a little bit different. This time I've gone for a monochrome colour scheme and I've actually used just an ordinary C6 card. And I thought we'd chat a little bit about this because although it starts out quite bulky and obviously quite built out, you can actually just fold this to one side. So if you wanted to, you could pop it into a little box or into an envelope and send it. And then when the receiver gets it, you can just pop it back up to give you that sort of shadowed effect. Now I wanted to build more up inside my box, but time was a bit of a restraint today. So I've kept it quite simple. So basically around the outside of the oval, we have a rectangle floral frame. Then on the inside, I've foam padded at all different intervals the, all them beautiful flowers from our flower set, which is this one over here. I didn't use all of them, um, but there's quite a few of them used on that one, just to give you a different idea. And then at the back here, on the reverse of my card, I've put a piece of acetate, which hopefully you can see, and I've then stuck my oval topper onto that one. At the sides of the card, I've added the butterfly border. Again, once again, as a reminder, not included in your bundle, but can be bought separately. And then I've just used the tiny little butterflies down the sides here. And I've also layered the tiny little butterflies on the tops of the butterflies on my actual die. Now I know that might be a little bit harder for you to pick up on camera being black on black, but um, it does give you a different dimension and a bit more of a focal point to your actual die if you wish to. To create the card, this is just an ordinary oval card blank. They're free fold, so the idea is normally that you put whatever you wish to in the middle, fold it over, and you have your greetings card ready. To do this, all I've done is just folded these two, and you can do this on a scoreboard if you wish to, but all I've done is just folded these in half to create my step back piece. So let's just give you a little idea of that. So it sort of makes it like a gate fold on the back of it if you wish to. And then when you bring that out, you can then just attach your acetate to the reverse of it if you wish to, or of course put a piece of card. And then every time you want to send it, that bit will just fold down flat for you to actually post it. You don't have to put the big bulky bits coming out the side if you don't want to, but it just gives you a different fold that you can create just using an ordinary aperture card. It opens up a few more ideas, hopefully, of things you can do with them. Moving on, we'll show you another card. So let's show you this one, because this is one of my favorites. Just because I quite like all the different colors on this one. So I show you a couple where we had used the mirror board in gold and painted them in. And I thought it was a bit unfair that I'd left the silver out. So this time I've done it on silver just to show you, of course you can do it with that. And I also wanted to show you that if you do go for the mega bundle or if you just treat yourself to the two floral frames on their own, there's no reason you can't use them together. So in the background here, we of course have the square one. In the front, we have the rectangle one. Both of them have just been stuck onto white card and then painted in on all different distress inks to give me that sort of floral color scheme going on. I've then done the same at the base using one of the square ones and then just popped my little bar on there. I did want to add some of the foam flowers around it as well, but I just simply didn't have time for that today. But you could certainly jazz it up a bit more if you wanted to, or maybe some big black butterflies maybe from one of them um, corner dies possibly but there's certainly a lot more you could do with it if you wanted to but it's just a little idea to give you hopefully some inspiration for some of the things you could do with these moving on to my last card today this is actually one of the first ones i made today uh, this is again the rectangle floral frame in the middle of it we have the oval topper and then down the side here we've got them foam flowers again this is using the white to create these flowers, which of course, don't forget, if you, if you are new to this, we can ink these, we can colour them, you can use your alcohol markers on it. There's a lot of ways you can jazz this foam up if you want to. Um, I absolutely love it. I just think it gives you a more real looking flower. The good bit with them being foam as well is if you do want to post them, they just spring back up into life. They're not damaged sometimes like a paper flower can be. They've got a little bit more resilience to them as well. Uh, and that's just the completing of that card. And then that's all of my cards today. So as I promised, I am gonna show you how to make the big flower, but let's just do one last run through of all of your different dies, and then we'll go on to making that one. Uh, so starting as, um, as individuals, we have our floral square frame, which is code D108F at 1599. You have the rectangle floral frame, which is D107F at 1599. We then have our nesting flower die, which is D106F at 1199. All of your different flowers, grasses and butterflies together. This is code D111F and that one's 999. 
we have your oval topper floral uh, that's code D190 sorry D109F899 and then we have your floral topper square which is code D110F or of course you can treat yourself to the whole big mega bundle if you can't pick just £45 buys you one of all of them dies, which of course, let's not forget, would cost you £71.94p if you bought them all individually, which will save you £26.94p. That offer ends at 5pm Saturday, 10th February 2018. And don't forget, obviously, we've shown you lots that you can do with this now, so I don't want you to forget about this one. This is your butterfly corner die this is code d102a and it's 10.99 and hopefully by now i've convinced you that you just need this foam in your life and you can't live without it if so your foam is available in nine colors it's 89p a sheet once again i will upload the video so you can um or i'll, I'll put a link to the video so you can go and see all of the wonderful flowers that linda has made with the foam for that video and a few other ones that I did too. So hopefully there's a few in that that will inspire you for different ways you can use your foam. But as promised, I do want to show you how we can make these flowers. So I'm going to just pop down on my knees to show you a few of these. Now, as I said earlier, you can make these of any of the size flowers. You don't have to use just one. You can interchange them for different effects. Or, of course, you can make them completely out of the, the size that you see them as, if that makes more sense. I've gone for one of the medium sized ones in the hope that you're gonna see it as I work with it. Um, but of course we can do larger or smaller. So here I have four of them already cut out. Now you're starting to wonder possibly at this point what I've done to them because I have started to attack them slightly but all will be explained. We're gonna start off with one as a solid and I've just shaped this using a bone folder tool just to give it a little bit of sort of depth and texture but we can just do a little bit more of that just to curve it up so it's not just a flat die for our second one all we're going to do is just do a little slit down it to the middle now with this i'm going to use a glue gun simply because it's quicker for you to see me glue them together and i don't have to sit here and hold it for a long time if you're doing this at home you might want to do it with tape which might give you a, a flatter fixture or possibly like a PVA or a plow glue would work possibly a little bit better and be a flatter texture um, and it won't be quite as bumpy as what I'm trying to say really uh, but they take longer to dry and I don't want to keep you waiting for me so all we've done is taken that petal pulled it over and glued it together so we now have a four flower four petaled flower instead of where we started off with the five now you don't have to but I find that where it's got quite a tip to it it can a be a problem to glue and B, it makes it quite high. So if you want to, just fold your flower down and snip a bit of that off, as much or as little as you wish to. Don't forget, you can always go back and cut more off. You can't really glue it back on. So do it in stages if you wish. We then take a big bit of glue and stick that on the middle of our flower. And then just offset your flower on top of that. Oop, hold it in place for a second while it sets. And then we're going to take our next flower. Now with this one, you can see I've actually trimmed out one of my petals completely. Because the next one down, I just want it to have three pieces. Hold on to that, because we're going to come back to that in a minute. But we're going to take this and we're going to put a little bit more glue on it. And fold over so that we have a three petaled flower. Now again, if you're doing this at home, you can shape these a little bit more than I'm going to. So yours will end up looking a bit better than mine. But I'm hoping I'm just going to give you the idea of how you can use these. Again, I'm going to cut a little bit off of that because I don't want it to be too high. And we're going to pump a bit more glue into the middle of our flower and pop that in. Again, sort of setting it offset just a little bit. Trying to get these glue strings out of the way so you don't see too many gluey bits. Although, of course, we can come back to them later. We're now going to take one, our last full flower as such from our four flower. And I've cut two out this time. So you've probably guessed by now. But we're going to pick it up. I'm going to put some glue on it and we're going to bring that petal over and close that one off. And then we're going to cut the bottom of that off as well because we still don't want this too high. We're going to fold them back a little bit more and sort of pull it out a little. Now this is probably the most trickiest one to get right to be honest because you want it to be open but you want it to be shaped all in one go. But you can certainly play about with these a little bit more if you're doing them yourself at home. Also where I am glue gunning mine that glue's a little bit thicker, so it's harder to shape the card because you've put quite a bit of weight there because you've now got two levels of card and a whole wadge of glue in the middle of it. 
And now I'm gonna put some more glue in there and we're gonna stick that one in going off to a different angle. And then we pick up our last petal and this one I've already rounded, but all we're gonna do is we're gonna stick it to itself. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on the outside of that, wrap it around, watch your fingers, I don't want you getting burnt and blaming me. I burn myself on an hourly basis in this place, but I've only got myself to blame. Too impatient. And then all we're gonna do with this one is we're just gonna trim the base of the cone off, because if we stick that in, it'll stick out too high, and we don't want it to be too high out in the middle of the flower, because it's not too real. Then we're gonna pump some more glue into the middle of it, and then we're just gonna sink that down into the center. Now bear in mind, this is a very quick attempt. It's certainly not perfect, but if you follow them steps and you play about with it a little bit more, you'll certainly get some better effects uh, or results. But it gives you an idea of just how easy it is to build one of them flowers. I did all of mine white and I've deliberately left the undercoats of some of these white, just so you can see. That's how I started off with mine. I've then pixie powdered over the top of these to get mine looking like this. If you haven't seen pixie powders, again, there is a video for them. We do have an introduction to pixie powder video. Pop on and have a watch of that because they are great fun to play with. But equally with these, although I've again done your example now in white card just because I didn't want to confuse it too much with what I'm doing. If you use pattern papers for these or if you want to stamp on them before you build them, create different effects like that or ink them, colour them, distress them. There's so many ways you can make them flowers look a lot more impressive just by adding your own techniques in with them as well. But that dye is a godsend because it's just got so many different sizes of these flowers that you can create using the different layers that there's so much you can do with it. Not only do you, could you make flowers like this, obviously it's been responsible for all of my foam flowers throughout today, but don't forget you could also use it to cut apertures as well um, on different layers on top of that. You don't have to just use it as I've shown you. There's a whole host of ideas you could do with them. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope I've hopefully give you a couple of ideas along the way. If you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up on YouTube. If you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do. We've just hit 450 subscribers this week and that number's thankfully growing week on week. Uh, so if you haven't joined in, please do join in and subscribe to us. All of the cards from today will be put onto our Pinterest page so if you do wish to pop on there and pin any of the ideas that I've shared with you today you certainly can do. Uh, thank you so much for watching if you do decide you want anything from today's video don't forget you can buy all of it online on our website which again will be in the description or, or um, comments. Um, if you do wish to buy any of it online then there is free PMP for orders over £35 within the UK. If you spend less than £35, then it's just a flat rate of £2.75. We'll post it anywhere within the UK. It doesn't matter if you're at the end of the road or the end of the country. Um, if you have enjoyed it, then as I say, please don't forget to subscribe to us, like us and share us. We always appreciate it if you'll share our videos as well. The more people who watch them, the better offers we can bring to you. Thank you so much for watching. and I look forward to seeing you all next Sunday when we have another new video to share. Bye for now.